meeting. Today is Wednesday, September 16, 2020. It's about 4.05 p.m. And uh, Ms. City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sanchez? Yes, here. Council Member Ibarra? Here. Council Member Figueroa? Here. Council Member Charette? Here. Council Member Nickel? Here. Council Member Richard? Here. Council Member Mulvihill? Here. And Mayor Valdivia? I'm here. Thank you. All right, Ms. Uh, City Clerk, thank you. Um, let's go ahead and begin um, on tonight's. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to start with public comments, I guess. Ms. Uh, City Clerk, how many um, how many comments do we have? Four for the study session. Okay, if you would, please. Just one moment. Mitch, can you please enable the share screen? Chair, it's enabled. Thank you. How do I get this? Are you able to log on? Not yet. Uh, Ms. City Clerk, would you please uh, pull the tape on our public comments? We're... I'm going to. Genevieve, did you click the share sound? We can't hear anything. Okay, just one moment. <laughs> Stop share. Sorry about that. Here we go again. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor and Common Council. My name is Gil Botteo, and today I'm calling on item one for your special study session regarding the Waterman landfill. As a long-term uh, vested concerned community member, I am in clear and strong support of the city council moving forward to bring a sports complex to that site. In the backup agenda material you have received, option three is listed as a third-party use of the site. This use will allow for the city council to move forward in a direction which will allow the free market to drive the best and highest use of this 14 no, I, I don't have this. parcel of land. My hope is that ultimately this will allow for the state for a state of the art excuse me facility such as the sports complex to be placed here on this site and to work to attract families to our city and fill our hotels along hospitality lane to their limits. I strongly encourage this council to move forward with option three during your discussion today. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. My name is Dominic Chisholm. Today I'm calling on your item for the special workshop on the Waterman landfill. I'm calling to support option three. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. My name is Crystal Gein. Uh, today I am calling regarding item number one for your special study session regarding the Waterman landfill. Um, now, as a parent and a vested community member, I am in clear and strong support of the city council moving forward to bring a sports complex to this site. In the back of agenda materials that you have received, um, option number three is listed as a third party use of the site. Now, this will allow for the city council to move forward in a direction which will allow the free market to drive the best and highest use uh, for this 14 acre piece of land. Now, my hope is that ultimately this will- um, Not available the, because I'm gonna be running the presentation. This is a sports complex. And so- uh, uh, Here on the site and work to attract families to our city and still our hotels and our restaurants. Oh, okay. well, then here, I, I'm the host, so I can unmute him. That being right. said, I strongly right. encourage. So you know I'm, I'm sorry, you. can you please mute your line, staff? Thank you. We're trying Thank to hear the public hear comments. Her. 
Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, I choose to remain anonymous. Today I'm calling on item number one for your special study session regarding Waterman Landfill. As a parent and vested community member, I am in clear and strong I'm sorry, Ms. City Clerk, can you please stop the tape, please? Staff members and um, council members, can we please mute our lines? Thank you. We're trying to listen to the public comments. Please proceed and uh, start over on voice number four. Yes. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, I choose to remain anonymous. Today I'm calling on item number one for your special study session regarding Waterman Landfill. As a parent and vested community member, I am in clear and strong support of the City Council moving forward to bring a sports complex to this site. In the backup agenda material you have received, option three is listed as a third party use of the site. This will allow for the City Council to move forward in a direction which will allow the free market to drive the best and highest use for this 14 acre price of land. My hope is that ultimately this will allow for a state of the art facility such as a sports complex to be placed here on this site and work to attract families to our city and fill our hotels along Hospitality Lane. I strongly encourage the City Council to move forward with option three during your discussion today. Thank you. And that concludes public comment. Okay, thank you very much. Um, all right, Ms. City Manager, um, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Mayor. As you know, one of our goals this year for staff was to bring forward some uh, possible development options for the Waterman Landfill. Um, so tonight is the start of that conversation. Uh, Chris is going, and her staff are going to go over the history, um, what we've been doing, and what some potential options might be, and get some direction on what you want us to bring back. So I'm going to turn it over to Chris and her team. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of Council. So thank you for giving us the opportunity tonight um, to do this. I know it's been long awaited um, to have this discussion. And Mitch, can we get the PowerPoint maybe? Thank you, sir. So I also have with me tonight in terms of staff, Tim O'Neill, who's been very involved um, with all things landfill. He's our environmental project specialist, so he's kind of hanging in the background, um, and we'll, we'll pull him up if we need him. And then Alex Keishta, our city engineer, is also here, um, who's also had involvement. So between the three of us, we're hoping we can get you through this, answer any questions, and um, get to talk about um, the good future of this site. So um, next slide, Mitch. So just very quickly, we're just going to hit on some of the history of the landfill. Um, that kind of helps explain how we landed in the regulatory um, spot that we're in. Um, we'll talk about the current status um, of our project that you guys are aware of, and then we'll talk about um, those kind of those foundational options that will work towards getting us towards possible development on the site. Next slide, Mitch. And next slide. So the landfill, as you know, uh, Waterman Landfill is located um, at Vanderbilt Way and Carnegie. Um, it's just east of Waterman. It's a 19-acre site. It's in close proximity to the Santa Ana Riverbed, which is an important piece for later. Um, it's also adjacent to an older county site. I think it used to be called the Backland Landfill is what we found as we looked in the history. The site itself um, is, was a private property when the city was um, using it. The city actually leased the site from Tri-City Airport for the landfill operation. Next slide. The city was the operator there from 1950 to 1960. We accepted non-hazardous solid waste, um, all, all kinds, the commercial um, construction demo, industrial, and ag wastes. The city discontinued operation of the landfill in 1961. At that point, the ownership of the landfill was still under Tri-City, so it was still a privately owned lot. Um, or lots. Um, sometime between 1961 and the 1980s, the property ownership um, was transferred, though, to RANCON. So if we go to the next slide. So for that time period, um, the, the city really didn't have much to do with the landfill beyond being done with operating it. 
1988 is when we kind of had the first um, hint in the history of some of the regulatory pieces coming on board. Due to the proximity of the landfill to the Santa Ana Riverbed, the Regional Water Quality Control Board required that a state waste assessment test be conducted. This test was um, required that groundwater testing be done to make sure that there wasn't um, any movement of toxins or things into the riverbed. And based on the results of that test, the Regional Water Quality Control Board determined that water quality, uh, groundwater quality testing would need to be ongoing. So from 1988 to 1995, RANCON actually continued performing those groundwater tests. It wasn't until 1995 that the city actually received a um, notice, not from RANCON, but from the state water board notifying us that the responsibility and liability for the mitigation of the um, any issues at the landfill site was not on the property owner, but rather on the operator of the landfill that put the trash in there. So at this point, Ramcon obviously was no longer willing to bear the responsibility of the property, and so the city took over the responsibility, even though the property ownership remained with Ramcon. Next slide, Mitch. So in 2003, the city received a notice from the County Public Health Department um, related to compliance with the landfill, not for water quality, but for gas emissions. And as you all know, as um, landfill waste deteriorates, it creates methane gas. So we had probes that were installed at that time. Um, and then a few years later, um, we were able to complete the construction of a gas extraction system to bring the landfill into compliance. The city has maintained and monitored that system since that time. The um, city remained in compliance for quite a while, and we actually ended up purchasing the property in 2015 from RANCON. So our regulatory framework, we really have four um, regulatory agencies that we deal with in relationship to the landfill. Obviously, the State Water Board and Regional Water Quality Control Board is, excuse me, is um, in, in, in charge of or enforces um, the water quality and making sure that there's no migration um, issues from the site. CalRecycle actually establishes the requirements for landfill closures, and then they actually lean on the local agency, the county, the local enforcement agency, um, to inspect and um, do any reporting for any problems here on site. They report back to CalRecycle. So in addition to water and in addition to all of the rules we have to follow in terms of making sure the landfill is closed properly, we also have a QMD in the mix, as you can guess, related to how we operate and maintain that gas extraction system and its potential impacts on air quality. Next slide. So the current status out at the landfill, um, like I mentioned, from 2006 to 2017, the site remained in compliance, um, both with the gas extraction and monitoring, as well as the, the groundwater sampling that we were doing. In 2017, we received notice that one of our perimeter gas probes had received a um, gas level hit that had exceeded the allowable threshold um, which is the lower explosive limit you see there of 5%. And while we have not been issued any fines, the city did go through the process with council um, to establish a remediation plan um, to get us back into compliance. We are currently in phase three of that plan, which is expanding our, um, which is expanding our gas extraction system. Um, and at this point, um, are hoping that we have that wrapped up here in the next couple of months to find out if we can bring that back into compliance or if we're going to need to move forward with something else. And just um, 
kind of as a note and something that was requested in terms of the costs at the landfill that we've spent thus far. We um, were able to um, pull back to 2011. We took a look at what we have spent in terms of the operation and maintenance piece at the landfill. And that total is just shy of $1.9 million. It's $1.886 million. In addition to that, the capital improvements that we've done at the landfill, um, including the probes that were put in in 2003, the initial gas extraction monitoring system, and then also the cost of completing phase three that we're doing now, that's going to total approximately $1.6 million. So while there is much history and many more costs um, prior to the 2011 um, time frame that we were able to grab out of our current financial system, um, that gives you some idea of kind of in the last decade what we've put into, into the landfill. The city continues to keep the relationship strong with the regulatory agencies. Um, our consultant, Tetra Tech, who is doing our phase three as well as our monitoring, um, also continues to make sure that we're, we're bridging those, the communication well with them. Um, we're staying up on our, our labs, our monthly and quarterly reports, and um, continue to make a good faith effort on that remediation. So next slide. Chris, excuse me, before you go on, can you kind of give us a best case and worst case scenario of going forward, what the cost might be depending on the outcome of the monitoring? Sure. Let me – so the phase three, like I said, is included in that $1.6 million of the capital. Um, if phase three is successful, and what phase three is doing, and actually it might be on the next slide a little bit. Here we go. Phase three is, is adding 17 gas extraction wells to the 33 that we have there now and upgrading the blower equipment. If we're successful in coming into compliance with this project, then we would not um, have to go into phase four of that remediation plan. And phase four of the remediation plan is basically putting a giant, what they call a curtain, underground that would keep gas from migrating off of our property um, onto the adjacent property. If phase three does not, is not successful in um, bringing us into compliance, phase four, very loose number, um, but based on discussions with our current consultant, looks to be in the neighborhood of two to another two to three million dollar capital improvement project. In in any case, and I just really want to make this point: um, even if we become compliant, right, with these extra wells um, through the phase three project, we still will be required to continue all of our operation, maintenance, and monitoring ongoing as long as there is trash in the ground that is disintegrating, that is creating gas, or that could possibly be affecting um, water, the water table. So that ongoing cost, just to share with you, um, we pay about $220,000 a year. There's actually a contract on, on our regular agenda tonight. Um, to renew our operation and maintenance agreement. Um, I believe it's $218,000 for the actual operation maintenance and monitoring. We also have um, a, an amount built in for non-routine maintenance that allows us to be responsive to things that we need to fix quickly that are kind of small items to keep that system compliant. Does that help? Okay, so we can go ahead, I think, and go to the next slide, Mitch. So here comes the fun part, and this is what I know, um, Mayor and Council, you've all kind of been waiting to kind of get to the meat of. So there have been a number of um, ideas and thoughts shared about, you know, what kind of development um, would we do on the landfill. And some of those things have been, as we heard tonight, um, a sports complex, 
Um, there's been talk of just an open air park. I know that we've had some people contact some other city staff about possible um, parking um, options. And then obviously if we wanted to develop ourselves or have somebody else develop um, a commercial building or office building or something to that, this is such a great location right and does have so much potential so i think that really our goal tonight is to as terry kind of said we really want to set the foundational piece of what the options are um, to move forward and then get that guidance from council um, in terms of what option they want to take a look at you guys want to take a look at sorry um next slide so as we go into this and i'm going to beat this horse to death probably, but the as the operator of the landfill, we do not get away from the responsibility for maintaining the landfill site. The only potential for that is if the trash is completely removed from the site, and even that um, is something that legal, we'd have to have some additional um, kind of homework done on. And I just want to make sure everybody understands that with each of these options, the city must continue to ensure that we stay in compliance, that we finish the remediation plan phase that we're in, um, and that we, you know, keep ourselves in, in good standing with the regulatory agencies, not, not just from a sense of, you know, eliminating fines or being in trouble, we also think that it's really important, particularly if we move forward with a third-party developer, it's going to be much more attractive to them to, to work um, with us on a property that they know has been maintained in compliance. So, next slide. So the three options that um, we've pulled together tonight are status quo, continue doing what we're doing. Um, the second is um, we want to talk about what it might mean if the city decided to, um, that we wanted to retain use of the site for ourselves. And then lastly, um, if we were to bring in a third party um, to possibly develop the site. So, so option one, pretty straightforward. Um, we have to continue to fulfill the terms of the remediation plan. Right now we all have our fingers crossed that's just through phase three. We would not have to, uh, we wouldn't take any further action related to the development of the site. We would have to continue our operation maintenance and monitoring as we're doing now. The second option, next slide, thanks. Again, got to get through phase three, got to continue on this remediation plan, but we could take a look at what it would mean um, to prepare for possible city use of the site. So whether that was park facilities or whether that was offices, some of the things, um, the steps that we would need to take, staff would obviously want input from council um, to determine the preferred use of the site. We would definitely have to do some additional research um, from a legal standpoint in terms of regulatory items and, um, you know, ongoing monitoring and liability associated with the various uses. So if the council were to um, choose to um, provide staff input on moving forward with option two, we wanted to make sure that there was an understanding that there would need to be funding allocated to cover the cost of special counsel to do some of the background work on um, how we would get there from here with whatever type of use of the site we decided on. And then option three, which has in my time here seemed to be the most popular, um, is a third party use of the site. So again, we finished the remediation piece that we're in now, hopefully don't have to go further than that. We continue our O and M, but while we're doing that, we can take um, take some steps to find interested parties that might want to develop the site for a sports complex um, or solar commercial or or however we decide to kind of guide um, that process. And what we would 
again, need to do is take a look at having some funding available to cover some legal work, um, again, related to um, regulatory compliance, um, as well as to develop an RFP. And we think that it can be done in a way that can maybe really offset or reduce um, liability for the city, right? It can kind of be a shared liability going in depending on how we kind of format that RFP um, process and document. We would obviously have to um, engage with our regulatory agencies and based on just kind of some quick um, research that we've done, the regulatory piece to get to development can take a couple years. So um, I just, you know, want to make sure that there's kind of an expectation and maybe more than a couple, depending on, depending on what we're looking at. We would need to have some um, toxicity experts probably take a look at some things. And then there's also some homework that would need to be done in terms of the rates and charges that have paid for the landfill so far and determining to the, ex the extent to which the city funds set aside for the purpose of remediation might be able to be used to attract development of that site. Um, of course, we'll need staff to do some additional work. And if this is the um, pleasure of the council to go with this option, um, we would go through these steps and obviously bring back an RFP document for council review to um, make sure that it's designed in a manner that the council is um, good with and that it would bring about the type of development that the mayor and city council would be looking for. So a lot of information. Um, I know that um, Albert Maldonado, I believe, is here from um, BB&K as well um, to help if there's any legal questions. I know that was quick. I hope it gave you um, an overview. Thank you very much, Chris. We appreciate the staff report. Um, I want to um, first off say thank you very much to staff. I know this has been um, really an opportunity for us as a city to um, optimize the best use of this land. And my position has always been as former councilman for that area, that we need to really um, gather consensus from the city council as to what steps to move forward. Um, as I've cross pollinated with various businesses and restaurants and um, the eateries and hotels along hospitality lane, um, the, as I've kind of thrown pasta on the wall to see if it sticks, there's a lot of individuals that have said over and over repeatedly that the sports complex might be a good opportunity for us. Um, in December of 2019, Councilman Figueroa, uh, and I'll turn it over to the councilman because that's um, out of respect to his ward. Um, I'll let him share his insight on the sportsplex that we viewed in San Jose. Um, and we met with the individuals there and it was a really um, neat and awesome opportunity to see how a city and a private developer move forward on what they called the Silver, Silver Creek Sportsplex. Um, if we adapt this here for our use along Hospitality Lane, just imagine and think of the opportunities that we can now backfill our hotels, the restaurants are full, and um, we can really move this city forward in a positive direction. I, th I think um, I'll hand it over now to Councilman Figueroa. Councilman, are you there, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am, I'm here. Yeah, if you could just share your insight on what you saw at the Silver Creek Sportsplex, and um, I'll turn it over to you. Certainly, yeah. Um, you know, it's, well, one thing's for sure. One thing's certain is that option one is definitely not an option. <laughs> Status quo, we, we need to actually be visionaries here and, and think, of, think of something that would be complementary to that area and something like a sports flex would be greatly beneficial to that area. Eventually we're going to get past uh, COVID and the situation that we're currently in. And uh, this would have the, uh, uh, bring the opportunity to, or to bring people in from, uh, from out of our area, from out of state, uh, to bring in and to fill in our hotels, our restaurants. Uh, what, what we were able to tour in with the, 
Silver Creek uh, Sportsplex was different leagues that come in from out of state um, and staying at their hotels, uh, you know, using uh, their restaurants. Uh, and w what it is, uh, and in fact, they couldn't even keep up with the demand. That's how, that's how many leagues are coming in to utilize their, their sportsplex. So this is really a great opportunity for San Rubino if we decide to move in that direction, which I hope we, we truly do. If you look at that area as well, there seems to be a theme growing uh, with the kind of the sports theme. You have uh, the, the recently opened um, the American Ninja Warrior training location there. There's a volleyball complex. There's also, I think, uh, three gyms that just uh, recently opened up in that area. So there seems to be a growing theme uh, along Hospitality Lane. And this would be another complimentary service for, for that area. And I think it would be really great uh, to assist with, uh, with the revenue stream. I think we need to transition uh, or change here and transition from spending money on, on this site to actually making money off of this site. And I think that's what we really should be focusing on as well. Thank you, Councilman. Um, one, one of the, um, the opportunity about 30 to 45 days after our tour, Councilman Figueroa and I um, then got on the phone with um, the owner of Silver Creek Sportsplex. And um, I'll tell you that there is a deep, deep interest for him to expand his market. Um, and so that's an opportunity uh, for the city council to consider ultimately. Tonight, we're seeking only to um, come back more of a vision casting. I think if we get too down in the legal weeds of how, who, what, and how much is this going to cost, I think that, that really will hurt our conversation and discussion tonight. So I want to encourage council members Let's be visionary. You have three options before you, status one, uh, status one, option one, and option two, option three. Even if we don't go sports plus, folks, the idea is that private development has answers and solutions to a government problem that we can't fund and we can't do. And so um, I, I am supportive of option three. I think that's really the way we ought to go. Um, if the sportsplex idea doesn't really come to fruition, we still have other alternatives and best uses within those subsets of option three. Um, so that's for your consideration and discussion tonight. We'll open it up to council members. Um, council member Nickel. Yeah, I believe does the Santa Ana uh, bike trail, um, uh, a river trail, does that uh, intersect with that property? Um, my thinking is that that would be a great headway for the Santa Ana River Trail. And um, I, I support the idea of a sports complex. The other idea is, I know we have the Blast Soccer Complex on the north end. And there have been discussions in the past whether that soccer complex is really of highest and best use given the development potential in that area and whether it might be possible maybe to do a swap where we could move that complex down to this, this area. Um, so I'm all in favor of those types of options. I'm, I'm, I'd like to look at how we may be able to couple it with some of the other uh, development opportunities we have in the city and uh, making highest and best use of other locations that we have in the city. Uh, but I support option three. I, I think we do need to get out of the business of subsidizing um, the ongoing cost of mitigating this site and find a way we can uh, generate revenue and recover those costs in a more responsible way for the taxpayers. Thank you, sir. Um, yes, and the Santa Ana River Trail does run parallel uh, to this site. Uh, Councilman Mulvihill, sir, go ahead. Yeah, now where is the Silver Creek uh, Sports Complex? Let's yeah. see. San Jose. San Jose. Now, I guess I've got a question. If we build something on it, uh, what do we do about remediation? I mean, if we're building something on top of this, uh, do we have to remit? You know, do something with the the underground? I mean, uh, I guess the whoever the the technical guy is here. Council member, that's why we would have to come back to you with those things. Depending on the direction that you give us, those are all details that would have to be uncovered and brought back to you before anything could happen. Uh, and so, it, so the devil's in the details in terms of the kind of of activity that's there. I suppose if you put in a uh, another warehouse, you would be sealing this the top of it up. And on the other hand, a you know a, a park or a recreation facility would not be completely covered. So, 
I guess those are the kinds of questions. But, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, I was here when the, uh, the uh, San Manuel Stadium was built, and there was all kinds of positive things, positive developments that are going to take place around it and so forth. So if we're talking about sports complexes, go slowly with that. Uh, because all of a sudden you'd be surprised people coming out of the woodwork thinking that it's going to generate all kinds of activity around it. And of course, our San Manuel Stadium over the last, I guess, 30 years has done virtually nothing in terms of generating activity around it. So anyway, uh, so again, go, go uh, slower when you're uh, thinking about what the alternatives are. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, I do, the interesting thing about the San Jose um, Silver Creek Sportsplex if I if I have my numbers correctly, it was it was something like they have 11,000 paid subscriptions that utilize their facility, over 175 leagues that have signed up. It's it's just a, a, a indoor sportsplex. They have four arenas. It's just awesome what they're doing, and kids and families and um, buses are coming in to use the facility from out of state, as Councilman Figueroa had said. Um, plus, I think this is really the wave of the future. I'm hearing um, the hubbub with other cities. Um, remember that we're competing against other cities. And so um, this would be um, a, a great opportunity. Councilman. Well, sure, so that Silver Creek, excuse me, that yes. Silver Creek Sports Con is an enclosed facility? It is. Yep. Okay. It's in an old Samsung TV distribution warehouse. And uh, the entire lot is um, apparently Samsung what for whatever reasons departed uh, san jose in 2004 2006 and ultimately this private developer said well i'm going to build me a sportsplex and he has uh built it and it's doing phenomenal um and it's it's really it's it's booming councilman charette yeah, thank you I, I think basically again tonight we're not we're really just kind of deciding on the three options um and giving staff a direction to go and I certainly think uh, uh, item uh, option three is is definitely the direction we should be moving. Uh, I don't know if I like the word go slow <laughs> because that's what government does best is go slow. And yet on the other hand, I don't want to jump too quick and decide on a sports complex if we haven't explored other potential options for that particular area. I think a sports complex sounds great. Um, it does perhaps pull away from some of the sporting events that are already going on in, in the city. And uh, we wanna be careful there, but it certainly would uh, uh, generate uh, people, which the hospitality lane really uh, will benefit from, which then we will benefit from. So I'm, I'm fully supportive of it, but um, I'd like to move quickly, but, uh, uh, judiciously and, and really prudently. Really, How about prudently? Prudently and, and to make sure uh, of all of our options. And um, uh, so I, anyway, I, I think option three is absolutely a no brainer. And I think that's the direction I would support. But I, but we'll, there's a lot more, as, as Jim says, devil in the details and, and a lot of details and, and options to come back as we go forward. And I don't want to. I don't want to put on blinders to one idea is all. I want to be very out of the box and thinking out of the box. And because we've seen one complex in San Jose that's doing well, that's great and good. But uh, let's just really be innovative and visionary and think outside of the box as we go forward. Very good. Thank you, Councilman. Um, Councilman, Councilman Figueroa, sir, go ahead. Good question to Ms. Jensen uh, regarding uh, how fast this is going to move along. As far as phase three, how soon will we actually have some information regarding phase three of the site? Um, great question. So we anticipate that the CIP project will be completed here probably in the next 30 days. We're actually, our only holdup at this point is we're waiting on our third um, and final permit from AQMD. So our understanding is that right now that that is at their um, executive level waiting for signature. Once we have that, we can put the final pieces in place, get everything fired up, get it tested, and do what we need to do. Um, so we're, we've got our fingers crossed that in the next 30 days that we'll have some answers on that. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Bari, you had your hand up. Okay, question. Um, so, Mayor, you met with the developer, you said, uh, for Silver Creek Sport Sportsplex? I did, yes. What was his name? Um, I'm not, I'll, I can share it with you offline. Okay. Um, we're talking about being innovative here. We already have the hotels on hospitality. We have the restaurants. Why a sports complex? We have several, uh, you know, sport areas around the city that are having problems right now being uh, rehabbed. My idea would be why, why don't we consider maybe like a, a concert hall? We don't have a concert hall in the city. That would be a better idea being where it's situated and with all the facilities in that area. Just um, let's not stick to just a sports complex. I love the idea of an indoor sports complex, don't get me wrong, because of our, our air quality is not always the best and people like to work out indoors. Yep. Um, but let's let's open it up uh, maybe for a concert concert hall out there. That would be awesome. I, I, I personally like concerts and we don't have any of that entertainment here. Cool. Thank you for that, Council Member Barra. Uh, any other council members? I'm in support of option three um, with, uh, and I, and I uh, echo uh, Council Member Ibarra's comments that we should uh, leave, uh, leave our options open. Um, we shouldn't be fixated on the sports complex. If we have a better opportunity with, with someone else who, who wants to do business with our city and, and bring something in that's innovative and that's self-sustaining, let's go ahead and, and uh, pursue that option or at least consider it. Do we need a motion for option three? Um, yeah, and I think Councilman Figueroa, you were you had your hand up on that? <laughs> I didn't have my hand up. I'll just go ahead and make the motion for option three, please. Motion I'll for second approval. That. Second. The second by Councilman Nickel um, and Ms. City Clerk. Um, let's go ahead and call the roll on option three, please. Mayor Pro Tem Sanchez? Yes. Councilmember Ibarra? Councilmember Figueroa? Yes. Councilmember Charette? Yes. Councilmember Nickel? Yes. Councilmember Richard? Yes. And Councilmember Mulvey Hill? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Um, one, one thing um, I want to say thank you to council members. I know the workshop setting um, allows us to get a good presentation. Um, Terry, does this pretty much satisfy all of our um, workshop or do we have a couple more planned? We did have a couple more planned, but I think okay. Bob can take a look at those and see what's better as a workshop or better as a council item. I believe we had one on manufactured homes and one on P-bids. Okay. Perfect. Um, and uh, Council Member um, Sanchez, you're you're absolutely right. Council Member Barra, uh, Council Member Charette, I'm not um, I'm not pigheaded in the sense that it has to be a sportsplex, but I just understand that the mitigation efforts, um, if we were to do let's say residential on the landfill, it would cost a ton. It would. I've I've already done some price estimates. Cost per square uh, foot on that would be in incredibly um, challenging for a developer um, to to acquire it. And so there's a prism that I've kind of anecdotally studied on my own and searched out some of these options, um, four of which were presented tonight. But yeah, you're right. I'm not. I'm not. If, if the sportsplex doesn't pencil, um, I think that we are remaining open. And so I appreciate your comment, Councilman Sanchez. Um, the food hall, that's the other thing is if we were to go with, this could easily go four hotel pads and two or three restaurant pads in front on 14 acres. That's the best ultimate highest use because you got a lot of TOT tax coming in. Um, but then you got the mitigation efforts and the cost per square foot on that. Um, one of the other alternatives is a solar farm and that's not that hip. That's, I mean, it's there's there's some there's some cost involved with that, and there's some benefits to that. But um, I think that just the, the 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 beauty of attracting people to our to our city through and via the sportsplex theme indoors, that is really an awesome opportunity um, only to fill our our hotels and restaurants and. It, it provides a sense of, you know, new beginnings for that area. And that's, it's much, 
badly needed. So I hear you loud and clear. Councilman Charette. Yeah, well, I, I, I agree with a lot of what you just said, but uh, remember when we talk about concert halls, when we talk about sports, we've got, uh, we've got the soccer complex. We've got, as Henry mentioned, up in the north end, the uh, splash. We've got yep. uh, uh, the, the uh, ballpark. Um, and then when you go to concert halls, we've got the downtown area uh, that we're going to be looking at with California Theater, theater and, uh, and our other theater and other opportunities. They're going to come along with the development of the Carousel Mall. Um, so um, we, we might be able to bring people into other areas uh, that will stay. So maybe hotels are the best bet. But I'm just simply, simply saying we've got to be very open to it and not be locked into one idea because it, it looks good or it works somewhere else. But really innovative and, and factor in all the other uh, areas of the city. Remember, we're 62 square miles, and uh, we can't do everything on Hospitality Lane. And though that's a good starting point, and a yes, lot we can, Fred. What are you talking about? And a lot of opportunity down there, without a doubt. Um, and I don't even think about COVID because uh, we right. are going to be done with that eventually. That's that's a temporary thing, so uh, that shouldn't even factor into our our, our decision. Just a wide open range. I get you. Um, so staff, um, I took my wife and uh, children. We were in St. George, Utah, and my little Abigail, um, this is another still within the permitted uses of option three tonight that we just discussed. Uh, it was the Thunder Junction City Park, and it was just recently developed about two years ago. And I literally had to come back again four days later because my little Abigail wanted to stop at Thunder Junction Park. It's a water park. It's a splash park. It's really cool. It's all city, city of St. George. Um, but it is really an awesome open play space area. Um, it, 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 I was amazed at what the city of St. George did and uh, St. George, Utah. So. Anyway, council members, we appreciate you and thank you for um, joining us tonight and to our public, thank you for your public comments. Conclude the meeting and thank you. See you at 530.